righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to some Four Lakes action, and we've got two very special players here. Okay, so first off, in the blue, we have Intergalactic Spoon Eater, which is one of the best usernames I've seen in Loe the Legends. Love the commitment, and, uh, you know, it, it brings some interesting thoughts to my mind, let's put it that way. And Intergalactic Spoon Eater is playing as the Celts, but up against the Intergalactic Spoon Eater, we have Dark Elf, who is a freaking legend. Dark Elf, I found well over a year ago now, Dark Elf is the ultimate Sim City player. He's got a plan from way, the way that first houses are positioned to the way everything else is positioned. And so I would encourage you, if you're watching this right now, I know you might only have limited time. But if you have the opportunity, maybe, if this is in video form anyways, to watch The Legend of Dark Elf when we first discovered how Dark Elf played, it'd probably be a lot more satisfying to enjoy this one. Because I can guarantee it. We've seen Dark Elf recently. I just never uploaded to YouTube. I can guarantee that it is going to be unique, and it, but it's still going to be specific to what Dark Elf likes to do. Okay? Um, Dark Elf was playing as the Aztecs. Now, what I'm, what I'm going to be curious to see is, will Dark Elf dock? Because Dark Elf's build orders normally go as following. Double house, double house which will eventually be triple house on each side. He fits or has the perfect amount of space for farms. He always wants his farms to touch his town center and then his houses. Uh, there is then a point for Dark Elf in the mid game where the farmers will be all female. That's right. And then the, the male villagers are going to be doing everything else. And then he'll go like four by four with barracks, four by four with archery ranges. I guess he can't go four by four with stables because he's Aztecs castles and universities and monasteries on the corner of the box very very interesting how he plays but i've never seen a dock from him so i'm gonna guess that maybe intergalactic spoon eater favorited this map and now dark elf is just you know playing in a different world but again no clue what to expect and i don't know anything about spoon eater except for the fact that the name is awesome uh celts are actually really good sieve for this because they do chop wood faster, and with that wood, you could dock, and you could make fishing ships. So, But Dark Elf, guys, has now played over 3,000 games, I think. Maybe someone can fact-check that. But Dark Elf plays a lot of games and always plays the same way. Hasn't ever changed. I mean, I'd be sad if Dark Elf were to change today. And I've always said, I think that Dark Elf is a player who, if he cared about what is, if he didn't care about what his base looked like, would be way better than 800 ELO. So I would expect the TC idle time to be very low. The efficiency that everything um, that happens in Dark Elf space is going to look pretty good, but I think the decision-making and why decisions are made is just very different. 3,865 1v1s. Okay, so he's closing in on 4,000. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, ideally this game goes on for a long time because there was a game that went on a long time again over a year ago and it got to a point where Dark Elf even made a wonder. Wonders are a useless building in 1v1s unless you want to rub it into the opponent. But Okay. Dark Elf has his four houses. He finished uh, that one tree and now has the wood to place the lumber camp. Dark Elf scouting. This could be auto scout, actually. The way it's scouting makes me think it is auto scout. Paying attention to the base at home. Uh, Russell says, do you even have 4,000 games, T90? I don't think so. Um, I think I might have like 1,500 or 2,000 1v1 games. But I do have 4,800 hours. Actually, no. I think I have over 5,000 hours on the Definitive Edition. And it came out, what, November of 2019? So I don't know how much time Dark Elf has spent on the game. But while I haven't played as many games, I obviously am casting a lot too. So I've spent a lot of time. Here comes the boar for Dark Elf. That's boar number one. So let's see what his buildup is. Meanwhile, over here, we have the ideal play. And I think the reason that Dark Elf is at around mid-800 elo is because... This is the elo where players start to pressure, but not everyone pressures. So I think if blue were to go really aggressive against Dark Elf and kind of ruin the Sim City plans, Dark Elf would probably be forced to resign and tap out. But guys, even this house, 
And trust me, he'll delete it if he has to. Even this house is perfect for the farms. Like he's thinking about this already. Uh, Alex says, uh, is that because you leave it idle overnight to get those hours in? I mean, I have occasionally, like after a 10-hour day, left it up, but no. <laughs> no. Okay, so I'm a little worried for Dark Elf right now. Also, Sean, in Dark Elf's economy, he's going to split up the tasks. But uh, ladies can mine some stone, mine some gold. They can't become warriors, sadly, unless they're Malians. But they can do whatever they want. Dark Elf, Dark Elf, Dark Elf. Ugh. There we go. Actually, right on top of the other board, too. <laughs> that was perfect, man. <laughs> and I think the other board expired at the same time. Oh my goodness gracious. Hmm. I was worried for Dark Elf because I thought we'd see a barracks. I thought we might see an archer range, but it is 800 elo. And blue has a big economy lead right now having fishing ships. And Dark Elf's actually going to dock. This is the, the first time I've seen a dock elf here from Dark Elf. Remember I said it goes two by two by two and then he'll extend to the third house. So I got that right. Does this mill line up nicely too? He normally deletes the mill and rebuild ones, rebuild, rebuilds one later on. Sorry, I can't speak. Dark Elf will now add fishing ships. Obviously much later than Blue. Blue has benefited hugely from the food income. We have a market. We have a blacksmith for Blue. And Blue could go fast castle here. And, and again, just get a big lead over Dark Elf. This... The economy of Celts when you have fishing ships is just so nice. You have the faster wood chopping, which gives you more wood, which gives you eventually more food because of the fishing ships. Wood bonus continues. The fishing ships continue. And yo, well done, Intergalactic Spoon Eater. He must have learned about Age of Empires when he was eating those spoons. Look at that. Meanwhile, Dark Elf going for Wheelbarrow. And now going for the farm upgrades. Okay, so now pay attention to this, okay? I remember it took me a long time to find out how Dark Elf was operating. We have a few videos on him. But, like, for the first 25 minutes when I casted Dark Elf so many years ago, I didn't know. And then people were like, wait a second. He's separating his villagers. Look, okay, lady goes to farm. All right. Okay, here's another one. Going to farm. Here's another one going to farm. <laughs> now, I'm curious on what he does because this, whatever farm comes from here is going to be, the spacing is going to have to be different with some of the houses. Like this here, see this mill? It's perfect because you can fit a farm there. And then I think you can fit two here. Okay. You know what Dark Elf reminds me of as we see the eagle... Uh, might even survive somehow leaving the TC area. Nope, it'll die. Okay. Oh, oh, it survives. Okay. Um, do you guys ever play against the uh, the AI and hear one of its excuses? Like, uh, there were too many wolves in thine area, and I shall abdicate. Do you ever hear that kind of stuff? I feel like the Dark Elf AI would be like, I had too many male villagers, and thus I couldn't farm. <laughs> That's the Dark Elf AI for you. I mean, there are plenty of female villagers over here. So Dark Elf just focusing on other things right now. And has even lined up the mining camp so that it'll look nicely later on as part of the wall. 20 seconds of TC idle time. Dark Elf, of course, has been fishing over here. We're going to have another dock, which should lead to more fishing for Dark Elf. So Dark Elf adapting a little bit. Yeah, I think the AI definitely says something similar to that. I just forget what it was. And blue is just booming right now. And blue has uh, the the farm upgrade coming in, has the second TC up. And I mean, he's going to have a much better boom than Dark Elf. But also, the longer the game goes, maybe the better Dark Elf will be. Wait, it actually says that? All my starting villagers are male or something like that? Really? Interesting. 
Maybe, maybe Dark Elf. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he took that too seriously at one point. Remember, I said he likes to do the four by four. He's actually gotten two, and he's going to maybe add another two. And he's just, he preps buildings. So again, if he gets attacked, he's he's dead, which is why he's here. But his TC idle time's low. His eco is going to look pretty good, you'd think. And just taking his time at the moment. Yeah, now that you guys say that, that does ring a bell for me. Also, Blue's house line is fascinating. <laughs> it's a giant line of houses. He's not quite doing it like Dark Elf, but that's funny. Blue, 48 eco and an age up. This is this is a stomp right now, guys. This is there's no other way to say it. This is currently a stomp. But with fishing ships coming out of the south and then fishing ships going to the north, it could be good. Now, Dark Elf desperately needs a house right now. Just got housed, okay? Let's see what Dark Elf does here. The other thing that Dark Elf has done in the past is he likes to use the same builder. Okay, see, look. Places the houses, and he's going to place it right next to these houses. Now, you might look at this, and you might say, well, wait a second. These houses aren't in line. No, you're not in line because the houses are perfect for the farms. You see, you can fit a farm here and a farm here, but then this one needs to be adjusted for his plan. I think, actually. I, I have to have faith in him that he knows what he's doing there because, like, here it makes sense. So I think he's trying to do a similar thing over here. Okay. Supplies! Man-at-arms. He's getting all of his technologies out of his barracks. Now he's going to add archer ranges. This is, yet again, the Dark Elf build order. I always think it's so funny, though. Like, blue... Blue hasn't even scouted Dark Elf right now. Can you imagine if you showed up to his base and you saw this? It is so unique. You just don't see other players play like this. <laughs> imagine riding across the steps and then you encounter a single file line of houses as far as the eye can see. Yeah, I was going to say that it would also be really funny if Dark Elf scouts this. That's a massive line of houses. Holy crap. Not for the same reasons, of course. Okay. 52 eco over 72. Dark Elf still hasn't clicked up. And he's adding more buildings. For better or for worse, this is how Dark Elf plays. Every single farmer is female. This is maybe where Dark Elf chooses to delete this mill. But we do have another mill. Yes, you could farm around this mill, but it ruins the spacing that Dark Elf is going for. Clearly, I don't know if there's like a special farm grid mod. But I, I, Dark Elf is definitely putting thought into this. I think the farms are all going to fit perfectly here. I think. We got more houses to the gold. That's satisfying. Good stuff. Blue. Going for TC number five? Yo, that's a lot of villagers. Of course, the weakness for both players booming would be if the opponent attacks. But since they're not both attacking, I think Blue's fine. I think Dark Elf, he always does this thing, I think, when he's in Castle. Because his Castle H time is always so late. But his eco tends to look quite strong when he gets there. So he'll always produce a lot of stuff um, from his barracks and his ranges. I, I guess normally it would be stables too, but he's Aztec, so he can't do that. So I guess it'll be down to as, okay, the, this auto scout is going to scout this now. This will kind of come down to what will blue make. It, I think Wode Raiders are a fantastic unit here, though. Unless Aztecs make Jaguar Warriors, Wode, Wode Raiders are probably your best unit here. A zero kill game. We have more military buildings for Dark Elf, who is on stone. And if I recall, he always drops his castles like somewhere like here, somewhere in the corner. He'll always have one gate as part of his base. And I think it's a palisade gate, but maybe it's a stone gate. I forget. And yeah, now you've got the production. Or wait. Hey, that's cheating, bro. What is this strategy crap? Sneak buildings. This is new. This is the new Dark Elf. He's reformed now. All right. And look, look. See, she was allowed to come over here. And, uh, and build the dock and build the buildings, and she doesn't have to farm. 
And look, you've got you've got a very diverse wood chopping eco over here as well. Dark Elf is reformed. Kind of. Okay, Dark Elf. 60 villagers, or 60 eco, I should say. It's 120 for blue. <laughs> oh, man. Blue, I'm not sure about the 5th and 6th TC, though. That is a lot of town centers. Um... Starting to get some blacksmith upgrades, maybe. Queued up five monks because there's five relics around the map and knows that. Hmm, okay. Scout hasn't moved. He hasn't scouted Dark Elf Space once. Ah! <laughs> the fact that this base looks so cute and he hasn't scouted it is just really bothering me. I, I would love to see people see this and react to it. It's so unique. Like, this looks like an Age of Empires base that you guys see all the time. It's more about efficiency. But this is Dark Elf for you. And we have a castle here with that same villager. Blue does not see this. So maybe Blue will go for the relic and spot it. But again, Blue's full boom. We have not seen Blue make switch in the military. Dark Elf does like to produce a lot, like we said. And I also mentioned that Dark Elf will delete the mill, as we now see, and we see the university. Or sorry, not a university. We see a, uh, a monastery. I suppose that could be considered like a Christian school, you know, like a religious university. Mm, okay. Arson's coming in, like all the blacksmith upgrades. I don't even know if he knows what they do. He's just clicking all the texts. If you look at his blacksmith, it's just... Well, he doesn't have more lined up, but he will, I think. And Blue's like, well, this is a pretty good time to get Loom. At 150 eco. And here comes a monk. Now, this monk is definitely going for that relic. And there's a chance the monk could convert the vill. Obviously, the monk would die, but then the castle would be denied because there's just one villager building this. Still, Blue has not scouted the enemy. Blue's like, this is the game of my dreams. I just get to boom. Hmm. That's a monk, right? He's a man of peace. So he's just like, yeah, go ahead, lady. You're fine. Just don't hurt my people, okay? Didn't have a clue, and the monk gets shot in the back. And now Intergalactic Spoon Eater's like, uh, What? Oh, God, don't tell me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Dark Elf. Notice it. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter if it's noticed or not. That's a lot of bills. Talk about panic, man. <laughs> oh, jeez, dude. The skirms are not even elite, by the way. I mean, a lot of villagers are going to go down for blue, and blue is panicked. And blue's just going to drop all the castles. Blue's like, I need castles everywhere. Are we going to garrison our villagers? Nope. Nope. We don't need to garrison our villas, but we'll just drop castles everywhere. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's funny. Well, Dark Elf kills quite a few villagers, but blue had villagers to spare, and all the army is going to go down, so... The eco KD is 23 to 0 and probably will continue to climb. But Dark Elf is going to be worried about that. And meanwhile, Dark Elf's base, as peaceful as can be, guys. Has one relic already. Castle in the corner as we expected. Added a ram here, which probably won't work. Dark Elf wants to make another forward castle. Um, I mean, at this point, Blue's getting murder holes. And Blue is going to be, in the next stage, able to make World Raiders. And I think this could be a problem for our Dark Elf. Like the Ram won't be enough. Dark Elf might need to, uh, to to back up away from this. And we'll probably lose both these castles, too. So, you know, Dark Elf starting to make some more units from home, I think. Oh, no. It actually is still focused on this archery range. And lots of lots of resources wasted there. I mean, it wasn't a bad move from Blue to drop the castles. It's just funny how he went from 0 to 4, you know? That was the funny aspect of it for me. Dark Elf also tried to snag the relic and went the wrong way, so that won't work out. 
Okay, let's double check. Dark Elf. Okay, grabbing the ladies off the wood line. Here they come to farm. Has the perfect spacing for the farms. As we predicted earlier. There's actually not many ladies over here. You've got a few in there. Um, Dark Elf, of course, has some bigger problems right now. And Dark Elf is getting Adlatl, which gives Aztec Skirmishers plus one range. And I think it's also plus one attack, but that is far from relevant in this situation. Which brings me back to, I think, Dark Elf just wants every tech. That's what Dark Elf likes to do, is just research every tech and have the base look pretty. Which, if you break it down, that's kind of how most of us started playing the game when we were kids. Get all the techs, have the base look good, right? That was like... That was at the heart of our gameplay. Now, Blue, at what point do you stop producing villagers? Because you have 170 with 10 in queue and then 16 fishing ships. There's 187, 86 now economy for Blue. What's funny is the Trebs are doing more than enough damage to Dark Elf. Dark Elf, though, did get two relics, which is, uh, I suppose, good. Also, the Spoon Dude hasn't even scouted Dark Elf's base yet. He doesn't even know what he's up against. That's a lot of vills. And eventually, Blue is going to have to end up deleting some. But Blue has defended. And there goes the Monk from Dark Elf, probably trying to get the relic, which is funny. And Blue's going to get that one. Whoa, dude! Holy siege workshops! Okay, 15 siege workshops. You go, man. You go. Also, blue getting guilds, which means you get more gold in return from selling wood and food. It's honestly not a bad tech if you've got 187 eco. These fishing ships are on fish traps right now. Please don't tell me you built this with, like, two vills. Seriously? You're going to have two villagers do this job. Seriously? Two villagers out of 171. Do you really need the resources that badly? Okay, take your time. Take your time, why don't you? Uh, Dark Elf is now out here with eagles and is raiding. Again, Dark Elf will just click stuff and says, I think I want to make eagles now, which again is not bad. But Blue can't afford to lose the villagers. So it's actually, if anything, it's kind of good for Blue to lose these villagers. Uh, the castle will go up. Dark Elf will, will probably take losses. Dark Elf doesn't really micro much, I notice. Just kind of sends the stuff out there. Similar to Blue, I guess, with the villagers. As Fury Celtica is coming in, which is for Siege HP. But I mean, you're going to need the Siege Workshops. And okay, now Blue's going to get more villagers in on the task. I feel like it's it's bad for Dark Elf that he has these buildings because it's distracting him. He needs to focus at home. And look, the casual one villager castle. <laughs> I love Dark Elf so much. Now, occasionally, Dark Elf will make a TC away from this area, but it's normally after all the farms are filled, and then he won't create anything from the main base. So I guess we'll see. Uh, another castle here for, for blue. Who oh, I noticed bought stone. If you look at the left, sold food for gold and then bought stone. It really wants castles. And getting sappers now too. So like blue, I think someone said completionist. Blue is also a completionist. Blue likes to complete all the technologies too. Because I'm not really seeing these technologies being utilized. There's a concern for Blue that Blue loses this. Dark Elf is really good with unit production. Um, and upgrades. And Blue is not producing any military units. And is not really getting military upgrades. But also has tons of castles. So this could be a long one. Because I don't think... I don't have confidence that Dark Elf can really kill Blue right now. Who continues to sell food... Okay, he's making heavy scorpions. Let's go. Heavy scorpions with Celts is going to be a fun one against Aztecs. There's not actually much Aztecs can do against mass heavy scorpion, but... Blue losing villagers, which again, you know, we have felt is necessary for a while. Okay, castle's going to go up. 
I think you would need Onager against Heavy Scorpion. Uh, here comes Blue. Blue's like, I'm going to take this gold. Thank you very much. Look, look at Dark Elf. Look, he needs farmers. He grabs them from far away. They have to be female farmers. There's no longer any females down here. And they go in and they fill the spots with farms. This dude is making eagles and skirms, is in imp, is making trebs, is trying to get relics, and he still focuses on that. Like, uh, here's the thing. Here's my outlook on it, right? Like, if I was someone who really had a... Um, like, I wanted to do a unique strat, right? That would make me make my chances of winning worse. I would eventually compromise and stop doing the strat if it was taking away from my ability to win the game. You guys know what I mean? Like, like so in that instance, if I was losing, I would never do it because I would just, I'd want to win more than I would want to do my, my strat. But for Dark Elf, he cares more about the strat and he cares more about the sticking to his, his way of playing than winning or losing. And he will do it in stressful situations. By the way, Blue will just continue to make villagers too, by the way. Still making more villagers. I don't know if it's it's instinctual at this point or what. Uh, anyways, this was just an invitation for Dark Elf to make trebuchets. However, Dark Elf is mainly making infantry and archer units. And scorpions are actually really good against that. Like, scorpion siege ram would honestly be enough. Potentially. The, the issue with Scorpion is that they're very slow and they have to fight in one spot. But when you have this many castles, you can make it happen. Watch this, guys. Kelt Scorpions fire faster. Pikemen, I guess they're just here to take out villagers, but it's still going to be pretty bad for the Pikemen. That said, for Dark Elf, I mean, it's still not wasting any gold. And I say that as he's about to send in eagles, and yeah, he's going to waste some gold now. Like, we knew Dark Elf was unique, but does Intergalactic Spoon Eater play every game like this? Now I need to know. Great time to get Elite Eagle right after you lose all your Eagles. And now we have the Trebs here from Intergalactic. And Dark Elf is going to be like, what? It's 50 army versus 13. Dark Elf has an Eco KD of 116 to 0. But he's still going to lose. That said, he'll take out the Trebs. So that's not bad. He'll kill a lot of villagers here, which isn't bad. Blue isn't queuing more for once. But, like, full scorpion is honestly one of the big weaknesses of the Aztecs. Because you would typically want to make cavalry against siege like this. And you cannot do that if you're the Aztecs. Blue still has more scorpions in queue. The eco KD is still insane. I'm going to keep that up because that's wild to me. But look at this. Kelt scorpions. When do we ever see freaking scorpions, people? We never see just scorpions. Now, I've got some concerns for blue and the longevity here with the gold. But I have concerns over Dark Elf being able to kill this. The poor farmers. They got hand-selected here to go to these farms. They're not enjoying life. Casual one villager castle. You know, just Dark Elf things. Your whole base is getting wrecked by scorpions. Let's just place a castle with one villager in the back. Eagle gets wrecked. I don't think Dark Elf knows what to do against this. I, I, At this elo, what on earth do you do? You would need to have Onager, but even then, that's so many scorpions, even the Onagers would go down. This is wild. You could tell he's sending units out and he's trying stuff. But I don't think he really has any clue what he can do here. Anyone else want to see what blue does in other games? <laughs> like, they're both kind of doing similar things. Like, let's say blue does this in every game, which might not be the case. Okay? Hey, you got a scorpion. If blue did this every single game, it'd be obvious to me that blue could easily be better than 850 Evo, right? It's the same thing as Dark Elf, but Dark Elf does the Sim City. You're kind of handicapping yourself for the strategy. I don't know if Blue does this every game. Maybe Blue doesn't. Maybe Blue doesn't boom up to 190 eco. Maybe Blue doesn't pick Celts. I would have to look. Also, I'm not hearing shots. 
I, I was expecting the scorpions to be louder. They're like silent scorpions. Maybe he uh, put a silencer on them. I don't know. Um, a dark elf, you know, not really wanting to resign here. Uh, queuing up more units. You can see the panic has set in. But I think the greatest tragedy here, guys, is that dark elf is not going to have any female villagers left. And how can you how can you reproduce? How can your people live on? If it's a full male society. Okay, she's still there. So she's their hope. All right. Yeah. Okay, there's a few in there. Okay, so they could still potentially recover from this. But they... The downside of putting all of your... Uh, all your mothers on farms is that... Uh, you might struggle later on. Not a very realistic game we have here, obviously. Uh, I don't want to know what's going on inside the town center if it is. But yikes. And, and no siege ram, either. L look at the scorpions. He's like, I won't go for rams. Rams aren't fun. I'll just go scorpions. Scorpions and one trep. Woo-wee! What's the KD? Yeah, there it is. 250, 260 kills now. You just cannot deal with this many scorpions. So, the strategy was full overboom into tons of castles and tons of siege workshops. And I kind of judged Blue when I saw the Siege Workshops, but now I'm not. One of the best traits you can have as an Age of Empires 2 player, guys, is commitment. That's it. Commit. Commit. What are you going to do? You're going to go Scouts? Commit. You're going to go Knights? Commit. Eco? Commit. Scorpions? Yeah. Commit. Got some stone being purchased. I guess we're going to see a castle here from Blue. Dark Elf isn't known for speaking a lot. Um... And, oh, wow, there we go. We see the GG well-played from Dark Elf. Respect to him for giving the well-played there. I'm sure he felt a little clueless there over the last couple seconds. And Intergalactic Spoon Eater gets the win. Now, we're going to quickly go to the stats, but then I want to look at his profile. I will be a little disappointed if this player doesn't play only Celts. That would be the dream scenario, uh, is if he does, but we'll see. Uh, more wood, more food, more gold, more stone. Lots of resources brought in. Um, you can see the uptime. Not gonna lie, castle time at 15 minutes, and then that many scorpions. Uh, normally, it gives me some vibes that, well, you know, the player might be better than 850 ELO, but then you have the conversation of, well, yeah, well, maybe he's dying a lot because he's trying to get scorpions. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, he's not gonna be higher. He boomed really well. He's also up against a player who's notorious for not playing water maps. He didn't utilize the fish boom as good as he should have. And notorious for not attacking for a while in Dark Elf. So it was a match made in heaven there for Blue. According to this, they are of similar speed. Uh, intergalactic with faster eco APM. But wow, that was that was wild. So this wasn't... We, we went in here thinking the focus would be on Dark Elf. And I mean, it kind of was. His base looked cute until it didn't. But focus was on the Spoon Eater, man. The Spoon Eater! And let's look at the match history. Now... I did have it up earlier, but I didn't really look too much at it. Okay, so we've got... The worry here for me, guys, is if we start to see losses that have, like, you know, two or three minute games. Because that means a higher rated player is throwing games. But guess what? Got a loss there. Got loss here, loss here. Okay, so this is a player who doesn't play only Celts. Does occasionally play Celts, apparently. But, you know, mixes it up, and the profile seems legit. So, Intergalactic Spoon Eater, do you have a cool image on your Steam profile? Where is this? That was someone else from earlier. Uh, nope, that was someone else from earlier. Where is it? Here. Okay, I'm a little disappointed. I'll give you a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. This could have been better, okay? You've now got some ideas. I'm sure people in the YouTube comments will give them to you. But not too bad. Not too bad. I could guarantee you, though, that Intergalactic Spoon Eater has a select all TC hotkey, right? If you haven't tried that yet, I made a TC tips video a couple months ago. That's one of the tips in there. If you want to boom, get the select all TC hotkey, and that's what Blue did. He just plopped down those TCs and just went whoosh and flooded the map with fills. In fact, a fun little stat. Uh, Where is it? Villagers, 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 society. Check that out. So the, the total villagers in that game for blue, 241. And I think that doesn't even include the fishing ships. 
Whereas the total villagers in that game from Dark Elf, granted, he rarely goes for second and third town centers. But 83. So he had uh, four times or three times the amount of villagers that game. And despite having an awful eco KD, still had amazing economy. It is a sad, you know, thing to, to take it this far. But let's be honest, villagers, they're kind of like slaves. If you think about it, they don't get paid, right? You just pay 50 food for them and they work the rest of their lives until they die. So Intergalactic Spoon Eater was just like, yeah, screw it. I don't care if they die. I'll make more. They're easily replaceable. <laughs> and Dark Elf was like, oh man, he cared so much more about his people.